Hey everyone, what's up? This is Uri for Gorilla Poker and today I have a hand history sent by a viewer which is a really really cool hand history between Linus and Muniz. I'm very excited to review it so let's get into it. So this is 200-400. The players here are uh, Kevin Paquet, Linus. I'm not gonna pronounce their names. This is Taxir, Muniz, and Linus Love to me. Yeah, these guys were reg battling 200-400 at least one day, maybe a few days. And it's interesting who's the, who's the weakest link here, because it could really be any of these three guys. Is, you know, Moon is strong enough to reg battle this lineup? Is Linus maybe a bit rusty at this point, given he doesn't play as high volume as the rest of the guys? And is Tax here, who has been playing high stakes for a while, but not nearly as long as these two, is he kind of taking a shot and saying, I can hold my own with, with the best. So, I don't know who the weakest link is, but... Moon is raises button to 900. Linus, 3 bets. You can see a little bit over 5x from the big blind. And Moon is calls. The sizings here are not important. I always like to say, you know, there's a range of what's okay, and within that range, we're not supercomputers, so who cares? So the 3 bet size is fine. The race size is fine. I know this 3-bet size looks big to some viewers, but 4x to 5x is, is completely fine, and this is just a pushing it a little bit. It's not a big deal. So King Jack, a two-tone board, and Linus Love starts out with a check. Now, very often we'll see someone fire a third pot bet, and I'll say, you know, he, might, he must be betting his full range. But King Jack, a two-tone is not really a board that lends itself to frequent small bets. Because there are so many draws, so many gut shots, like uh, hands like ace-10, queen-9 suited, and also so many pairs, right? Just like ace-8, eight, eight, nine, jack-10. Firing a small bet gives your opponent kind of an easy time at realizing their equity. So these boards actually, in theory, lend themselves better to big bets. And then you have to play a polarized range. You can't big bet your entire three betting range. And Linus is probably going with a strategy, so when he checks, you're going to see the natural hands to check, so like pocket 10s and pocket 9s if you 3-bet those, pocket queens fairly often, and then some traps to protect these with, you know, the most reasonable one being pocket kings, of course. So yeah, check, check, turn queen of diamonds, and Linus fires out with a 70% pot size bet. Queen does improve a lot of hands for Linus, such as, first of all, Queen Jack and Pocket Queens, Ace 10 and 10 9 if he has those. But yeah, lot, lots of hands improve. Ace Queen is, is probably good enough to fire a, a decent sized bet. So definitely reasonable to bet here. And when you imagine the range, you have to think of the value threshold. Is Ace Queen good enough? Is King 5 good enough? Is King 9 good enough? Like, where, where is the limit for this size, considering how connected the board is? Not sure one pair hand would actually be super happy to do this. And then draws, right? So hands with an Ace, hands with a 10, hands with two clubs for the most part. Muniz calls could have a very wide range in terms of this board. I'm sure you guys don't need me to, to run you through the combos. We get to the river three of hearts, and here Linus throws out a quarter pot bet, so a block bet. Now, what this implies is that he has a hand that is still good enough to value bet, but it's very, very thin. So were he to bet something like ace-queen on the turn, this would fit perfectly in my eyes, or something like king-five where turn bet is also getting a reasonable amount of protection from draws, but now they missed, and ace-queen is still good enough to bet the river, but not big. So we bet small, and, and this in theory should be protected by some traps. All right, you don't bet small only with a very face-up range, but also add some strong hands. Moon has raises 4x, so he's saying, you know, probably he can beat a weak king. By, by making this raise. So I, I'd say this is somewhere in the area of two pair plus. And then if, you know, maybe he has ace 10, 10, 9, maybe he has a, a flop trap like a set, and maybe just has queen jack or something like that. And Linus tanks for a bit and shops over for an additional 20k. 
saying, you know what, Munas, I actually have a trap. I have something like Ace-10-10-9 10, 10, here. Munas tanks and makes the call, and we see a showdown. So, really unusual spot to see the bet 3-bet on the river. In 3-bet pots, usually people just shove or check shove their strong hands. And at showdown, Linus has 10-7 of diamonds, and Munas has pocket jacks. We'll quickly run down through all the streets for everyone. Linus 3-betting 10-7 is fine. Checking flop is, I think, fine. I would probably bet this more often than not, but I think checking it is okay. Then turns an open-ender, definitely bet. And bluffing the river is fine. Linus is probably randomizing his sizes a bit. And when he gets raised, the decision to 3-bet all-in is actually, you know, a very... Very unique play. A lot of guys would have zero bluffs in this spot. Of course, it's easy to overbluff if you like making this move, which, which maybe Linus does. But if we give him credit for using a randomizer and not doing this too often, then this is a really, really good play. As far as the hand choice, again, without digging into a solver, I can see why he did it. You know, having the 10 is kind of what you want for the shove, right? You want to share hands with ace cards with ace 10 and 10-9. And how can you really have a 10 with a hand that block bets the river without something like this? Like this is a really unique hand to have. You're not betting 10-8 or queen 10 or jack 10. So it's either king 10 if you get here with king 10 or this hand. And in that sense, I think this is probably a fairly sick combo choice. So really well played by Linus. And then Moon is showing up with pocket jacks. Calls pre-flop, which is fine to do. Sometimes four bet, sometimes call. And then he is checking back the flop on King Jack 8, just setting the trap for Linus, because if he never checks back anything strong, Linus can just go bananas, right? So you have to, to throw some traps in there. So check back flop, normal. Call turn, normal. Raise river, normal. And then, do you call the river 3-bet shove or not is actually not a trivial decision, and you need to run through your head. Would Linus ever 3-bet shove worse? Like, would he ever 3-bet shove something like pocket 8s? Would he even 3-bet 8s to begin with, and in the end, or 3-bet or shove king-queen? And the answer is probably not. And then you have just a bluff catcher. Uh, you're getting really good pot odds, but is the guy ever bluffing? And you know, against a lot of guys, you might find the hero fold here, but definitely not against Linus. One of the reasons he is considered the best, that he can find all these unintuitive bluffs with good combos and good frequencies, and then when he does some crazy play, you can't confidently just fold your hand. He, he always is going to find a bluff. That's it for this video. Thanks to our viewer for sending the hand. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.